Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In a 60 minute documentary, the father of Anders Brevik was interviewed. 77 people were killed by Brevik, most of them teenagers on a camping holiday. The father of the man responsible for the deadliest massacre in the history of peacetime Europe had contemplated suicide after hearing what his son had done. In the interview, Jens Brevik said that his son should have saved the last bullet to take his own life. He said, it's an awful thing to say, but I cannot, I cannot forgive him. He called him a monster, but then he was asked, do you still regard this monster as part of your own flesh and blood? He replied, yes. Though he called him a monster and said he could not forgive him, he stopped short of renouncing him as his son. There have been some extreme cases where a son or daughter's behavior has so offended their parents that they have disowned them as their child. In Isaiah 49 verse 15, God asks, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. God loves his children with an everlasting love. Is it comforting to know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And hello, welcome to the program. It's Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And a bit of a controversial one this week. Our subject is salvation is forever or eternal security or as some would like to say, once saved, always saved. And I'll be very interested to hear your take on this subject. Ken, hello. I feel, yeah, this has been a hot subject of debate for centuries in the church. And let me say right at the outset that I don't want to approach it as a dry theological bone of contention or even get into some heated argument with any of our listeners over this one. For me, it's a subject that's far more important than that. It goes deeper than winning arguments about doctrine or even getting a theological viewpoint across. Mm -hmm. To me, it reflects upon the very nature of God and also upon the work that Jesus did on the cross. Personally, I just find it hard to believe that God would allow Jesus to to go through all that he did for my salvation and then after I've trusted him for salvation that I could lose that by some inappropriate behavior or lack of performance on my part. So salvation is not about what I do here. It's about what he did at the cross. Mm. It was an interesting story you told at the uh, top of the show there about Anders Brevik and uh, you quoted a verse in there uh, that you know, though some may earthly parents might in extreme circumstances forget their child, excommunicate yeah. them, that kind of thing. But God will never do that to us. Can you just talk to that for a little bit? Yeah, I think sometimes we try to bring God down to our level and and make him like us, but he makes it clear that we shouldn't do that. I don't know if you remember that prophet Balaam. He was the one that was hired by Balak to curse Israel. And uh, as he opened his mouth, this is what he said. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? In other words, what Balak was trying to do is saying, look, look at these guys. Look at them in their raw humanity, all their weaknesses and faults. Surely you've got to curse them. Mm. But, um, you know, the prophet said on God's behalf, well, actually, God's not like you. Um, He doesn't deal with us conditionally. He doesn't deal with us circumstantially. And especially, you know, this is a beautiful picture for those of us that are in Christ. He deals with us on the basis of our position in him. It's on the basis of that righteousness that we are accepted with God. Uh, Phil, you mentioned that phrase, once saved, always saved. Personally, I prefer to say, once a son, always a son. Okay, that's interesting. Once a son, always a son. Always a son. I mean, we've been born again. Can we be unborn? Uh, We're not born again and again and again and again. Mm. Uh, We might be a bad son at times. We might be a prodigal son. We might be even a lost son, but we're not an unborn son. You know, the the parable of the prodigal son, we find him right out there in the far country feeding with the pigs, you know. You can't go much lower than that. Yeah. But he didn't act like a son, but he was still a son. When he came home, uh, his father said, this is my son. He was lost. He's, he's found again. But he was still a son. Once a son, always a son. And when we get saved, we're born into the family of God. This means we're out of the courtroom, if you like, and into the family. That's why I love um, the book of Romans. It sort of takes us through this whole process. We begin in the courtroom. I mean, we're, we begin as sinners, and the judge is before us, and the sentence is, you know, all of sin and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. Mm-hmm. But then, of course... You know, we're brought into Christ. We God accepts a substitute 
substitute and Jesus takes our place. We believe in him and we're born again. We're brought into the family of God. And, and so later on in that epistle, Paul actually says, now God has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. Now that's what we had in the courtroom. We, we were in fear and trepidation because everything was against us. Our sins condemned us. We're waiting for the sentence. But you know we're now in the family of God, so we don't have that sense of condemnation. In fact, the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit now that we're children of God. We're in the family. Yeah, and it's interesting when you think of it in that context that it seems that there's one thing that God seeks to do more than anything else is to actually get our, us to put our trust into into Him. And could you ever put total trust in a father who may unadopt you? You, you just wouldn't do it, would you? That's right. You know, I think our salvation is much bigger than what we think and what we understand. You know, we talk about making our decision for Christ or making our commitment to Christ, and then mm. you probably know that we then make our recommitment. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I'm saying, Phil, is that, you know, did it all hinge on one moment in time when we believed in Jesus Christ? Well, if you look at God's perspective, it's much bigger than that. It stretches actually from eternity to eternity. Paul says that whom he foreknew, these he predestined, to be conformed to the image of Christ. And those that he predestined, these he called. Those he called, these he justified. That's when we believed. Mm. And those he justified, these he's glorified. Now, you take them one by one. To foreknow means whom God set his love upon from eternity. The the term to know someone is is a very intimate thing, like Adam knew his wife Eve. Mm. Uh, Or we read in Amos, God says to Israel, you only have I known of all the nations of the earth. Now, does that mean that God didn't know the Assyrians or the Babylonians or the Egyptians? No, of course not. What it means is that he chose Israel as his own special people. Well, God knew us from before the foundation of the world. And then he predestined us to be conformed to the image of Christ. In other words, he he saved us with a purpose, and that's that we might become more and more like Jesus. And then he called us, which means that he drew us to himself. He opened our eyes so that we could see and understand our need of Jesus and put our trust in him. And then when we did that, <laughs> that's where we talk about making a decision. Well, hang on, a lot of stuff's gone on before that. Mm. When we put our trust in Jesus, then he justified us, declared us to be righteous in his sight. And it says those he justified, these he's glorified. It's almost like it's a done deal. Even though it's a future event, God speaks about it as a, a, a something that's already taken place. So it stretches from eternity to eternity. Mm. I don't know about you, Ken, but it almost does my head in thinking about all of this. It's <laughs> it's pretty big. It's a very big subject. And I guess there are some people who would say, on one end, you know, this kind of love, it's too good to be true. And, and then there's others who would say, well, okay, let's go party. Let's go sin. Yeah. You know, if God loves us that much and we can do whatever we like. Yeah. Actually, I find it's the other way around. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. When you uh, realize how amazing God's love is, that you just want to respond to that and, and, and just reciprocate that love. But that's a good question because Paul actually asked that question, what should we say to these things mm. if God is for us? And that's the thing. Actually, the emphasis in the Greek is on that word for. He's not against us. I mean, we may fail, but he's still for us. We may be slow to understand and to believe. He's still for us. Uh, we may muck up at times, but he's still for us. Mm. Now, if God is for us, who can be against us. So Paul asks, what shall we say to these things? And then at the end, he tells us what he says to these things. He says, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, principalities nor powers, nothing on earth, in heaven or anything present, past, anything to come, nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. So he says, I'm persuaded, and I guess I'm persuaded too. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, yeah, I, I can see it from God's perspective. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And I guess that really reinforces the notion before of the once a son, always a son concept. Yeah, you know, Paul says, God has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. So condemnation is over. Condemnation is the expectation of judgment. There's no expectation of judgment for a believer because that judgment took place at the cross. There's this overwhelming sense now that we're in the family of God, we're sons of God, and we've got this spirit of adoption crying out, Abba, Father, we're safe and secure with our Father. A good reminder that salvation is forever. That's our theme this week and we'll have more tomorrow. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book This Is The Life, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.